Okay, you guys. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Jenna Flackert. And I'm Lianca Reyna. And this is the Hot Hustle Show. And today we're talking with Isha Patel, and she is a quantum UFO expert and channel. And this is going to be wowsy. Aye, aye, aye. Oh my <laughs> gosh, this is going to be so wowsy. <laughs> Isha, welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm excited for this conversation. I think we can safely say it's going to be out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's dive right in. One of the things that we were looking through following in your story was you know, the description of how you were in a meditation and you were hearing a lot more about uh, dimensions. You found yourself in the 12th dimension. 13th. 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 I'm sorry. 13th, right? And at the time, you couldn't find very much information because I, I want to say this was maybe 10 years ago. And very much so because I remember we started our work about 10 years ago. And when we first started, gosh, you couldn't even find the word like coaching or intuition. I remember looking on the internet. I mean, just basic words. And so here you were um, talking about the 13th dimension and people just weren't even having that in their realm of in the way that we do today. Can you tell us a little bit about your story and, and what your experience was with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that experience that you guys just mentioned was probably one of the key pivotal moments. And, and yeah, it was about 10 years ago to this day. So, you know, it, it kind of blows my mind a little bit as well to think that I've I've been able to have those experiences such a long time ago before anybody was talking about it, you know, and, and also I didn't really have anywhere to go. I had nowhere to kind of experience and, 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 you know, I had no guidance. Like I felt like I threw myself into the deep end somehow. My soul just decided, you know what, you're just going to go straight in the deep end and figure it out. So that's, that's kind of been a big part of my journey. And what happened a couple of years after that. So that was probably one of the very key sort of starting moments. But I will say I didn't have that experience again for a very long time. And I think that's why sometimes these things, they, they go in journeys, they go in seasons and cycles, you know? So, so in that time that that experience happened where I was activating my Merkaba light body, I found myself in the 13th dimension. Next thing you know, it's just everything is is complete bliss. When you have an experience like that, there's a there's a knowing, there's an understanding. I mean, you can read all the books about enlightenment, you can read all the books about channeling, you can read all the books about galactic races, but until you're actually there in that moment, that's when it really really kind of ramps up. So for me, I I had a knowing about it. And when I had this knowing, it was really just this wordless kind of experience where I I was it. You know, I say, I say when I tell the story that I was in the 13th dimension, but I also was the 13th dimension. Oh I am the 13th dimension because there was no separation between myself, my body, the world around me. It was like, I just didn't know where the boundaries of me were anymore. And they, they were non-existent. So to have that as an experience is something that one never forgets. And even though after that moment, I, you know, eventually settled back into life and I did everyday human things, it's something that has always, always stayed with me, knowing that it's possible. And also the journey since then over the next 10 years showed me that actually it's achievable by everyone with the right tools and practices. And that's, that's kind of been the exploration of going, well, I had this experience I kind of did it spontaneously, didn't really know how, but if I was to backtrack that and teach it to someone else, is that possible? And that's where I've really been playing in the realm of consciousness these last few years. I think that's absolutely fantastic. What I want to dive into next is, are you with um, some of the UFO investigators, are you actually kind of matching up what you're channeling with what their evidence is? Oh, yeah. Great question. That has been such an interesting journey. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad you asked this question, actually, because most of the interviews I do, they're either for people who are in the nuts and bolts ufology or they're people more in the spiritual, intuitive consciousness kind of space. 
And there seems to be a divide between these two worlds. And my research has showed me they're literally both talking about the same thing. Wow. You know, so, so I've had the pleasure of interviewing even people like Jim Penniston, who, I mean, you know, he's he's known for the Rendlesham experience back in 1980. He actually saw the craft land on the ground, went up and touched it and received a series of codes. And then 30 years later, it came out through hypnosis and, and other means. The, the whole experience started to unfold. He's now written books on the topic. So having the chance to actually chat with him personally, and Jim doesn't do a lot of interviews. So I was really glad to get the opportunity to get him one-on-one. -on -one. And when I listen to his story, and then and then also this is this is the what you don't see on the podcast. What happened after we stopped recording on that episode of First Contact? Jim and I stayed on and had a little bit of a chat. And I asked him, I said, but what do you think this actually is? And after all his years of experience and and his research as well that he's done with Gary Osborne. They have landed on this idea that it is much more likely to be interdimensional or they suspect it's extra temporal, which is outside of time, which is similar to interdimensional. Sure. But essentially, they've landed on the idea that it most likely is not extraterrestrial, which is no. a realization in and of itself. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's opens a lot of other questions that I don't even think I can formulate with my mind right now. I'm sure you're familiar with like Dolores Cannon's, you know, mm -hmm. predated work in which she took people through QHHT to, you know, to, she talked with people to their higher self, but also was speaking to other beings. How do you feel that those two, so one was spiritual in a sense, and the other was UFO, right? So she did, you know, two separate kind of books. And also, I felt like at the time had them kind of separated. But how do you feel that that was really more one? I think she, I think if you were going to ask her too, if you have actually had her behind the scenes, I think she would have also said that it was, you know, how, how your um, guest explained it as well. Um, but how do you view that? What we're really entering here is the field of, of consciousness. And I think it's it's a very common characteristic of the human mind to want to define everything in very yeah. clear <laughs> Every boxes. So UFOs sit in one box, fairies yeah. sit in one box, spirituality sits in one box, connecting with angels sits in one box. But if we open it up to that more umbrella kind of view and you look at it from a multi-dimensional perspective, well, you've got 13 dimensions in the universe and that framework can explain all of those categories, even going so far as, you know, mediums who connect with deceased spirits on the other side. So yeah. in the framework that I use, that would sit in what I would call the fourth dimension. It's the closest dimension to earth. It's also consisting of the astral. It's there's still time components existing in the in the fourth dimension. As you go up to 5D and beyond, and a lot of people talk about 5D Earth now, that's a very commonly known thing, which back yeah. then it wasn't. No. Um, a lot of people <laughs> talk about 5D now. And that's that's where things start to enter more of a unified field consciousness. So then you go up into the higher realms and you've got, for example, the 11th and 12th dimensions. That's typically where I connect with angelic beings. And anywhere in the 5th to the ninth is typically where I find a lot of the galactic beings. So, for example, the, the Syrian beings, I have met some Syrian beings that are vibrating at more of a 70 frequency, some that are more of at a 90 frequency. And I could I could go through many, many different races and tell you, for example, the Arcturians, the ones that I've connected with typically are vibrating or their race as a collective also is vibrating at more of a ninth dimensional energy. And how I know that is because when I first connected with them, they gave me a series of, of sacred geometry codes and the codes were very much in Trinity form or higher Trinity form in three, six, nines. Yeah. And so as I started tuning into the energies, I realized it's because they're vibrating at that ninth dimensional frequency. So of course, the geometries that they're using for the healing are going to come through that dimension. So every dimension has a characteristic and, and the beings that I connect with all fall somewhere within that 13 dimensional framework. So then instead of trying to keep everything separate, what you realize is, well, they're actually all interconnected by this thread of multidimensionality. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's interesting. I did this work in access consciousness and we ran bars and what they would do is have to have us clear out the fifth, sixth, seventh through 13th dimension first. And then we would clear out one through five because they were, those were really what we knew, what we were identified with. So that you know, it's just like, oh, everything that you're saying lines up exactly with what I have learned through other people, which is just blows my mind for a second. What with, with the Arturians, what is the biggest message that you keep hearing that we need to hear here on planet Earth? There's one particular being who I connect with in in the Arcturians and there's many many I've connected with but this particular one holds a very close connection to me her name is Anashita mm -hmm. and she's a beautiful gentle feminine like soul and very wonderful healer and whenever I connect with her the message that she always says to me is just remember the love that you are and also that that love is life and when you flow from that love, that is the life, that is the healing, that is the manifestation and the abundance. And the more we see the unification of those frequencies, the more we are able to integrate and embody because our, our purpose here, as we as we all go through this, this ascension, is to integrate these higher frequencies through the guidance sometimes of these, these beings that we connect with, and then bring that into physical form so that we can live in a physical body, healed, whole, complete, totally, fully aware and connected to our capacity as conscious creators so we can literally live heaven on earth. And in your work, do you channel to help others and see what specific messages that they need? Oh, yeah. I was just channeling then when I gave the words from her. <laughs> I just wanted to confirm. I didn't know if it was from past to connection when you were deep, deep in a meditation or something like that. No, I just asked her just then. I said, hey, what do you want to say to these people? Yeah. When I, it's sort of funny because when I do channel the Palladians, I do have to kind of go direct and it takes a minute for me to go <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Um, but and I think that they're easier to reach than the Arcturians kind of I mean I guess it depends who you are I think it depends like, on on where your soul connections lie and you know one of the most common questions I get asked is so Isha what star seed am I and I'm like well you're all of them you know yeah. I have an Arcturian soul aspect I have a Pleiadian yeah. soul aspect I have aspects of me in the angelic realms I and then again you know then there's past life and ancestral and you can go so far down that rabbit hole it's it's all of you I mean yeah. my so my soul so I actually know so my higher self the name of my higher self is Hirana and and you can translate that in light language I've done a whole analysis on that in the past it's really to do with love expressed as light in in this very specific form and under the umbrella of Hirana, you have multiple soul aspects. So one of them is my fifth dimensional soul aspect, Lily. She was one of the very first soul aspects I connected with, even before I knew the name of my higher self, actually, because, because the ninth dimensional soul frequency is a little bit further up the, the vibrational scale. So I first connected with Lily. And, you know, it's it's interesting. When I was a kid, before I was, long before I was dating, long before I knew that I wanted kids or anything like that, I remember having this thought in my mind, like, one day I'm going to have a girl and her name's going to be Lily. And I had no idea where I got that from as a kid, you know? So I think this, this thread has been in my presence my whole life, but it wasn't until about maybe eight, nine years ago that I became really more aware of this consciously and realized that Lily is a soul aspect. So... So that's one of my soul aspects. Then I have Anahera, who's in the angelic form. 
And if you want, I can give you a really cool story about her. Yeah. So I, I connected with Anna Hera when I was in Glastonbury a few years ago. Again, I was doing planetary work there. I was, I was, yeah, I was just experiencing so many wonderful things in Glastonbury. It, in and of itself, it's a very spiritual place, right? And then I was there doing earth work while I was there at the time, very consciously. So there was this one day where I was walking up towards the tour for the first time. And if you've been to Glastonbury, you know that the tour is considered a very spiritual place. It's a big sort of tower on the mountain. And a lot of people go there on pilgrimage and that. So I was headed up there and I was doing it very like mindfully, you know, so I was like walking up, I was, I was very connected. And then I had my, my music on and, you know, at Spotify, like, Sometimes it just plays random things. Well, I don't I don't even know how this happened. Don't ask how this happened. This random song that I had never been aware of before started playing on my phone. And the song is called Anahera by no. Bill. And I love <laughs> Bill. He's one of my favorite trans artists of all time. So I had that playing while I'm walking up the tour, like mindfully, you know, connecting and looking at all the sheep. And then I just got this energy, like this sense of, okay, pay attention. Something is happening. And I looked at my my iPhone. I was like, this is a cool song. What is this song? I don't know what this is. And then at the time I stopped and I looked up the word Anahera and it means angel in, in Maori. So as I, as I was piecing these connections together, I tuned in and I realized I was actually connecting with a being called Anahera. I'm not sure if at the time I knew it was a soul aspect. I just knew that it was a being called Anahera. And I thought, okay, that's cool. So I held that connection as I went up the tour and just oh. kind of meditated and, and anchored that in. Now, fast forward, I don't know what length of time. I can't remember what year all of this happened in. But but so after that experience, I, I then at some point did clock on to the fact that she's my soul aspect and I think I discovered that through meditation when she kept coming to me and she said like, <laughs> I am you and, and kind of like put those pieces together you know I was like oh she's my soul aspect that I'm connected <laughs> oh when they say that oh gosh I didn't ever put that together right exactly yeah. exactly so then okay. what happened this one particular morning I was meditating and this is where I get goosebumps every time I, I tell this story so, <laughs> I, I was meditating as I normally do and this one particular day instead of stopping my meditation at 8 a.m because I have to like get up and go do things right I just felt just stay in bed a few minutes longer and so I just closed my eyes again went back into meditation and then suddenly out of nowhere I'm in this this vision like really really strong vision of I'm yeah. in a car and there's another car coming towards me and it's going to t-bone me it's going to hit me like my heart is pounding I'm freaking out like am I at an intersection and, and it's just it's wild and then suddenly there's like this whoosh and the car just comes to a stop and this whole vision lasted less than five minutes you know I don't even know how how many minutes it lasted but it was short but profound, like my heart was pounding. I was terrified. Like I'd had this horrible nightmare. Like the cortisol was just going through my body like there's no tomorrow. So I had to you know, take a few deep breaths, just calm myself down. Then I got myself ready, went off to my studio that morning. And then as soon as I got there, I opened up my emails and a friend of mine had sent me this email saying the title, Saved by Angels. And I opened up her email and she had just described that exact situation happening to her. And she said, I don't know how this happened, but my car randomly went into neutral and stopped in the middle of the intersection and this speeding car went through that would have hit me otherwise. I just thought, oh my God. <laughs> I'm like flustered, like, wow. Okay. I know I've got chills all up and down yeah. my body. That is crazy. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's interesting. There, you, you're making me aware that there's so much more magic in this world and yeah. that we are, I mean, I never say higher self. I say, go to myself, right? Mm. You know, like I, I feel that that's the biggest guide on where I'm getting my message is myself, yeah. not like me making things up, but me actually asking myself from other dimensions and other places. And I, maybe I need to ask more questions of it when it comes through do you have advice on that? So it's taken me, let's just say, a long time and Lord knows how many thousands of hours of meditation to land on the conclusion that I'm about to share with you. But the first thing I will say is it, each person's individual exploration is the most important thing. I guide all of my clients to, to 
follow their truth, even above the things I share in my course, you know? Yeah. I always say, take this as a guide and then find your truth in that because each person is going to resonate so differently in, in their unique way. Now, the way that it has been shown to me, and this is this was I spent months <laughs> just exploring and exploring and exploring what are these rays of consciousness? And what I learned was, so we have source, right? Source is one, it's just one frequency. There's no separation in that. It is love, it is light, it is it is life. It's, there is absolute connectedness. It's like the whole ocean with no breaks whatsoever, right? But then what happens is there's a there's a level of experience in that. And if you were to take the sun and then extrapolate into the the rays that come out of it, well, you could technically measure each ray. And then inside each ray, you have photons. It's quite amazing how the universe actually represents the reality of, yes. of the right. So so the sun, you can imagine, is the source. The rays you can imagine are like the higher self, but then inside the rays, every little photon is every little soul experience that you're having. And that, that part can be individuated. Whereas the ray of light is more like a, like a long wave sort of, right. It just, yeah. it just is the wholeness of that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I perceive to be like the higher self level. And then within the higher self, is all is you know each and every soul aspect so lily and anna hair and, and all the other ones i've connected with are like the little yeah. photons inside but yeah. they're more at the individual level but the individuals make up the whole which are again part of the sun Does that <laughs> make sense? yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but i think we want to ask you this weird question that just came through let's talk about the space time continuum Right. And, and here's my specific question. So I've had this little play that I do with myself in creating things. And I will ask my, we'll just say higher self for now to like plant signposts to let me know that I'm on the way to creating. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, you can set as many intentions as you like, you know? <laughs> so but can you do you? So is it just now time? Always? Oh, in that sense, or, no. Definitely okay. not. No. So the linear time that we experience is, it's just as much and just as not much of an illusion as it is that we are souls, but we are one. So the same way that we are expressing individually on this planet is the same way that time is linear. Soon as we step out of the 3D frame, you are not just your body and also time is not linear, Right. So there's, yeah. a, there's a correlation in that. And it's necessary. It's actually necessary in the individuated form for us to experience time in a linear format because firstly, our bodies, you know, there there is a, a level of capacity to which they can experience the, the allness of, of all that is, you know. It's like if you try to shove the entire sun into a photon, it would explode, right? So, so if we're these little photons, these little individuated pieces moving through this ray, it's it's it, there is a necessity to have that that time component and also because we created that for fun there's a joyful element to this as well because guess what we get to have memories we get to have experiences where we can just focus on one thing at a time we get yeah. to in this lifetime on this planet we get to be present to this moment with no awareness of what's happening outside of that. How cool is that? Like when you're in your light body form, everything always is all the time. It's just <laughs> always, always is. And, and here it's like, oh my God, I can't see what's happening in Russia right now. And that's really cool. You know, yeah. I get to be so present to this yeah. moment that the three of us are sharing. Yeah. And there's nothing here. Like there's yeah. like, how cool is that, you know? Yeah. So from yeah. that perspective, yeah, we, we get to experience linear time. And then also you have this, this version of self, you know, like that ray, that ray that we talk about, or the highest self level, that is aware of all the photons. And so that ray has some idea of where it's going and it's got the bigger picture perspective. And if you're a photon on one end of the ray, you don't know what's happening on the other end of the ray, but the ray know what's happening on both ends. And so if you take your awareness from the photon to the ray, then what happens is, oh, look, I can see more things. I can see more photons. I can see, I might even get a clearer view of the sun, you know? So you get to see things 
from a different perspective. And that's really when you understand that, you see that, well, actually the, the true nature of it is that the photons are not alone. They're all traveling within this, this ray, but it's only when you shift your awareness that you get to see that. And, and this, the idea of what is truth when it comes to the space-time continuum, well, it comes down to where are you looking at it from? So if you're looking at it from the 3D, you're going to experience linear time. If you're looking at it from the 4D, time appears more in a spiral fashion. If you're looking at it in a 5D, it's a spherical convergence. Mm. So wow. it's all right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Isha, was... In, in in the obviously like you said you've been for a lot of meditations and a long time so it actually makes me feel like good okay I'm not too late to the game right but what do you think was the uh, what is the biggest thing that has changed in your life or what is what is all this information because if you for me my soul is so curious like so curious I'll have these like questions that just linger linger there and it's like then I know when it shows up as the answer but it, these are big questions sometimes and I can see by the way you um formulated some of the answers that you've had those as well what has changed in your life and was there like a moment kind of like like oh my gosh because you said the words it's so exciting that we get to experience this moment so I know that there's got to have been a shift in your life and Maybe that's something that our listeners and our audience can can experience or know that's available for them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important to, to mention some of the pre-context to this as well. So there was a point in my life where I hated life so much I didn't want to be here. And to, to contrast that to what I've just said before in this interview, I'm like so excited by life yes. and everything is amazing, you know? And sometimes people think, but, but you know, if I'm, if I'm down in the dumps or I just don't see life that way, what am I supposed to do? And I can tell you, I've, I've been through that journey through the realizations that I've had. And one of the biggest things I've gotten through my practice and through this understanding is a deeper appreciation of this life because it's really easy and I'd say I probably spent the first few years of, of my awakening trying to go up and out I wanted to know what was out there I wanted to know all the galactic stuff I wanted to go out everywhere on all these journeys and learn all the things and I was so curious and then eventually and I think this is a, a different level of I guess maturity that I came to that I'm probably still growing in if you ask me again when I'm 60 I'll probably have a different response you know but I think for where I'm at now, what I've learned is that, yes, there's so much out there and I love exploring all of that. And once you have that perspective, it lets you be more appreciative of what you have now, because mm -hmm. this moment, and this is something I've said to many of my clients as well, who come to me banging on my door saying, Asia, I just, I want you to take me to the 13 dimension now. And then I just want it now. And I'm like, that's great. Like I, I can teach you that. I absolutely can teach you that. You spend 12 months with me, I will teach you that. But can you take a moment to appreciate this moment now? Because once you have that knowledge, once you open that gateway, you won't get this experience back. And I've said this to, yeah. to people in their spiritual journey and even their business journey, because I coach a lot of entrepreneurs as well. You know, they they often want to just go get to that, that million dollar mark and they want to race there and have it yesterday. And I'm like, that's great. But what about this moment? Like maybe in this moment right now, this season of your life and business, things are slow and you've only got a few clients and maybe you get to have, you know, your, your late breakfast and your morning meditation practice. When you're traveling around the world running, you know, 10, 10 events a year, you're going to be up at 4 a.m. in multiple different time zones and your life is going to look very different. Mm -hmm. so, so what I do is I really invite people Yes, have that have that bigger picture, have that vision. Absolutely, explore consciousness. It's the best thing you'll ever do. And also do it from a place of appreciation and gratitude because some people want to use spirituality to escape their current reality because mm -hmm. they think over there is going to be better. And let me tell you right now, it's absolutely not better. It's just different. And whatever issues you have now, if you can't learn to appreciate now, you also won't learn to appreciate that because then there'll be something else that you'll be going for. So yeah. the reality of life is in this moment, in this moment, we have consciousness and every moment is so unique and so precious. And if you can appreciate this moment and then you can appreciate this moment and then you can appreciate this moment, 
That's how we build a happy and fulfilling life. And please, I know, you know, when I say this, it's so much easier said than done. And it is a practice. It is absolutely a practice because yeah. then emotions come up and I don't like this feeling anymore. And this is uncomfortable. And I'm having a fight with my spouse and my kids are driving me crazy. And, and my, my dog chewed up the couch today and everything sucks, you know, <laughs> I, think I get that. But, but if we can find the little moments of humor and appreciation in that, it yeah. isn't, it isn't evolving practice and a constant reminder to come back into the moment and to recognize where are we creating our suffering because in in the consciousness you know all of us want to experience consciousness but really what most of us want first is we want inner peace and once you have that that peace then yeah, then it becomes fun. Then it's fun to connect with Arcturians. Like yesterday I went on a starship and 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 met with a new race I'd never met before. And that was really fun, you know? Yeah. That's that's where it's coming from. Yeah. I had a show that I did before this one and I had to take a break from it because people were just coming to bliss out. They just yeah. it was just kind of like get on, get on the line and let's just like you know, meditate and bliss out and, you know, but their lives were, weren't that great, you know, from what I knew of those lives. <laughs> and it just felt like, no, I'm going to relaunch this series. And it's going to be all about really creating the life that you want to lead. It's about yeah. creating, you know, your own life. And if galactic beings and higher self beings are a part of it might make it greater might be more expansive so I love that you said that is so beautiful oh my gosh can you give the audience a little experience of channeling can you like tap into the group that'll listen to this call and and do a channeling experience for them I'm always channeling as we okay, speak I don't, I don't, I don't channel in the way that, you know, like I'm not going to close my eyes and go oh, off okay. funny. I have done that type of channeling before. And if you like, I'd be happy to share with you why I don't do that anymore. No sure. reason to close your eyes. There are shifts in the evolution of it. Well, this is it. It's, it's not because I understand that, you know, people need to do that type of channeling and I've done sure. that in the past as well. But when I learned that, that, you know, everything is happening in the moment, yeah. I no longer do that. And, but there's another really I key that I, that I want to mention here as well. And that is when I started connecting heart to heart with a lot of the different higher vibrational beings, one of the, one of the things they consistently said to me was actually Isha, we, we won't take over your body and it's better that we don't. Because my previous way of channeling when I first started, and that's just the only way I knew, was my consciousness would go off to the side. Yeah. And if you're familiar with Dolores Cannon, she describes it in this way as well. And then the energy comes in, but it's almost like you're in a sort of a hypnotic trance or you're kind of you're not fully aware. Yeah. And the, the risk of doing it that way is, and I have, I'm totally speaking from personal experience here, is that you can't 100% be discerning of what energies are coming through. Now, when I used to run channeling events like this, where I would be channeling councils of light and you know light language and all sorts of things, I used to have this practice of self-discernment where I would then visualize, and this is one of the practices I teach in my course, it's called the golden bowl method of discernment. You visualize uh -huh. in your heart center, a golden bowl, and it's, it's filled with liquid. And whatever it is that you're trying to discern the energy of, you put it inside that bowl and it, it shows you the truth of the frequency of that. So mm -hmm. I, I've practiced it on, for example, I said, I called in Christ and then I said, okay, I'm going to put Christ light into this golden bowl. And it's like fountaining, radiating golden light, like just amplifying that to know tomorrow. Did the same with Archangel Michael, this beautiful rainbow and blue energy is going everywhere. And then I would put my channeling. So I would just imagine I've taken my whole hour of my channeling event, written it down a little scroll, rolled it up, pop it in the thing. And yeah. I would see like maybe 80% of the bowl is clear. And then there would just be this little bit of like a black, murky, dark, grayish sort of energy coming in. And when that happened multiple times for me, I realized it was because in the process of my conscious awareness actually checking out, just little tiny subtle frequencies were getting in that were not in my awareness. 
And so from a place of discernment and integrity, I realized I had to find another way to channel. And that's when I discovered that you can in real time go into your heart space. You can connect from one being to another. You can receive the guidance from them, but they're not taking over my body. And I am in my body and in my awareness at all times. So for example, before, when you said, you know, what's the message from the Acturians? I did that same process. Now, this is years and years of experience showing I can do this in real time where no one notices it's even being done. There's a, there's a quickness to that, that the second you, you said that I called her in, I visualized her in front of me. I said, tell me what you want to say. And I'm relaying that in real time. And that form of channeling I found has a higher level of integrity in the vibration that comes through because I'm actually present to it instead of getting myself out of the way. That's brilliant. Love that. Is, would you even venture to say it's a tiny bit more direct in that way with the actual being in the fact that that their their message is not being I guess distorted so much by yeah, okay it's not yeah. going through the filter of my mind and my experiences yeah I'm saying it in the words that they want to say yeah there is it's going to be some level of translation because you have to understand they don't speak English, they speak right. light language yeah. or whatever. But yeah. they will speak to me in the English words that they know make sense to me, that will land for me and that will translate for the audience. So there's always going to be a level of translation in that, but I found it's much more accurate. And if I was to do the golden bowl discernment practice now, which I can do again in real time as we speak, I can see in my golden bowl this Arcturian's energy going in and it's pure. And the words that I've said to you are, are pure. There's a purity in that because it's coming directly from her. And so one of the biggest things that I do on myself is I just, I keep checks and balances in place for my energy and my vibration, because anytime you're opening yourself up to these realms, you have to understand anything and everything is out there, you know? So you need to know the tools that, that you can actually use to keep yourself in check. And every client who works with me knows how to discern, how to check themselves, you know, and also if they notice that something is not a hundred percent clear, they then get the tools to clear that as well. So that next time they can refine and refine their own practice. Wow. <laughs> <It's> kind <laughs> of like, whoosh, my brain is bustling. <laughs> is that what you've done? If you've been able to, you know, discern and clear a lot more of your practice and also in working with the beings, do you start to, I guess, translate better or work with them to utilize our language? <laughs> like, are you able to, yeah, yeah I, I, feel, I felt like that might be the case. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, there's a difference between when I'm just communicating with them one-on-one -on -one versus when I'm communicating to relay a message. Sure. So when I, when I talk to them, I, I, it's, it's like a non-verbal transmission that I receive from them. So I have this, I don't know what, what the best way to describe this. I bet there's some more like scientific way to describe what I'm about to say, but I, I kind of call it like 3D thought because most thought, like the way that most people think it's a string of consciousness of words. It's just like, you know, you string the words together and that's a thought form. If you expand that into more of a spherical kind of thought where inside the thought is a pocket of information, it, inside it is the words and the feeling and the frequency yeah. and sometimes the geometry is associated with that. So when I communicate with the beings one-on-one -on -one in my meditations, I receive packets of information <laughs> instantly. So I don't need, like what would take me, you know, a, a, a thousand page book to describe, I receive in the matter of seconds as an understanding or a knowing, because it's like it goes into my body and suddenly I, I get it. So mm -hmm. it's a different way of communicating. And, you know, on the rare occasion, I do come across somebody who is a little bit more telepathic and a little bit more able to receive that type of communication. And that's where with some of those clients, our work gets really fun because, Sometimes they'll be telling me something and I'll be like, okay, just stop, send it to me and I'll get it. And I do, I get it. I, I, I pick up that energy and they're like, oh, okay, it's so much easier to do it that way. Because otherwise they would spend the next half hour of our session <laughs> trying to explain and unravel all the little intricacies. I'm like, I don't need that. Just, just feel it, be in it, send it over as a packet and I've got it within seconds. I knew you were going to say the word packet. I just, I was like, that's the word she's going to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> and my other question, and Jen, if you might, do you think that we'll be able as humans to start doing that more? 
Um, no, like, is there an evolution of it? So yeah. Are we going to start? Be, be, will you, do you feel like maybe as, as the evolution for humanity will start to be able to relay information more that way? Not, not full on, like the way, not full on, but like in the way that you're able to receive it as, as packet, as, you know, the energetics of it. And would that yeah. help? Humanity, right? Like yeah. th that seems like a duh question. But it, but... I, I feel like there's a deeper question than that too. Yeah. Because with the USFO type investigation and the work, I mean, these are real beings on other planets too. That, but are you channeling? <laughs> I don't know that there's really an answer for this. I think I I know the answer of what you're going to say, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So the audience knows <laughs> how do I how do I say this succinctly enough? So I have the the impression we are physical on Earth. Arcturians are physical on another yep. planet. Yes. And they also are infinite beings that have their essence in different realms and and yep. so I guess the question is. There's not really a question because you're really channeling just the energy of it. You're you're not necessarily channeling from a physical or a, an entity. Which or was my on that? initial question, but <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, Let's just add that. I, I think I oh, think I understand what you're trying to get at, and I hope I can. <laughs> I know it's not it's there. not really a real question because you are it's just like... channeling the essence of it, right? Yeah. Like like if I was a higher self, you know, and you're channeling directly from my higher self. Right, you don't really necessarily care. Of, yeah, there's an element of understanding where where that line becomes physical, right? Yeah. Now, and I think you've hit the nail on the head. In fact, a lot of people don't even understand what you've just said, which is that we're physical yeah. and speedy, but they're physical and ninety, and other beings are physical and five D. Because if my frequency was a hundred percent in five D form, then five D to five D would be physical. You'd be able to touch each other, right? But right. when you're going three D to five D then it feels like they're a, they're a hologram or they're like an energetic light yes. being. 5D, yeah. being, 5D being can touch each other the same way that we can touch each other. So, yeah. so in that sense, yes, there is physicality all the way up to, I think really it's only the, the sort of 11th and 12th dimensions where things get really non-physical, you know, and yeah. it's just like, like light beings where, where, yeah, it's just, it's a bit different, but, but yeah, most of the dimensions have a level of physicality to it. If you're yeah. in the same relative dimension connecting in that dimension. So, yeah. so if I was to, you know, say, say like completely embody my higher self and say, you completely embodied your higher self. And then we were in the same physical proximity, a higher selves could like interact, you know, I mean, it would take a really yeah. deep amount of of embodiment to be able to do that and this is where we're getting pretty much into like a merging or like a really deep anchoring of frequency but yeah physicality is is very relative it's very relative to where you are and where the other energy is so anything that is not physical anything that's not in 3d to us appears non-physical but that's just yeah. the relative of it. and well and i mean I, I i mean there's the hungry ghost realm which is kind of the under us realm like the energy is lower and I, now I don't know if that goes through the dimensions. Is that actually a lower dimension or a lower realm? Or do you know the correct saying of that? Like uh, you know, the people who channel Archangel Michael or uh, or that kind of angel energy, it, they are going to like get closer to heaven. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a higher realm. The information is, is lighter and different than if you were to channel from like just a, a being that's lost its body on planet earth right you know that yeah. doesn't have any greater information for me than what i already know so do you, how do you know that the arcturians are they just other beings that have different information or are they in a higher dimension or realm so first of all people have this really hierarchical view of of the dimensions and one thing I really want to dispel is is that because okay. thing is every dimension has its 
place, it's time, it's experience, you know, and, and yes, there, I mean, there are shadow worlds of, of things that exist. And yeah, I think, I think that a better way to describe it would be maybe a, a density. Like I feel. Okay. Yeah. Density, yeah. That's a good word. Yeah. Too. You know, like like expanded or contracted. Realms. And then a lightness in other realms, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes we want to, we want to gravitate towards the lighter realms, but there's got to be an appreciation as well for, for all levels of consciousness and existence, which is like, it's like non-judgmental towards, you know, higher and lower or hierarchies or anything like that. But in, in saying that, yeah, like you could say, you know, even here on planet earth, some humans are wonderful beings they're very philanthropic and they're very <laughs> loving and they're very kind and then some humans are not there yet and they're in a <laughs> solution so yeah. even within the 3d you have that spectrum sure sure <laughs> yeah no I love how you see so galactically because I mean it's just like what you know, and I mean, even me, I've been asking these questions. I feel like I'm getting some of the answer as I'm asking it. Yeah, how you are. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, no, wait, let's see what she has to say. It's like wild because my, my brains haven't really asked questions like this, you know? Yeah, and I'm sure yeah, some of it, different. you know, they're coming to you based on what the audience is thinking, right? Like, I'm yeah. sure you guys are tapped into to that frequency yeah and, right you, said you, you connect with the play audience um do you know which play audience you connect with or like any specific beings or is it more like a collective consciousness so I know that I can channel Palladian you know and and I also know that a lot of it is just about love you know yeah. like someone's like love thy neighbor I mean, I, you know it just seems like it's a lot of repetitive you know light words you know there, there's not necessarily, they don't understand human, humanness as well as I'd like them to know it. I mean, like they could probably give me a fitness plan if I would ask, right? But it would, it would be just like what I already know to do anyway, as far as, as far as that. So that's about, as you know, and I almost don't love doing it. I would much rather have conversations on consciousness, just you know, what feels light, what feels heavy, you know, what feels more expanded, what feels more contracted and kind of just navigate the whispers of consciousness. And I don't necessarily know or need to know who it comes from. It's more like just the collective, like yeah. a, high, a high collective, a high conscious collective. So for me, that's what it is. I think Lianca has kind of a different answer. I do have a different viewpoint, but but you know, I do. And so, but I, I loved what you said about every um, person's journey is different. And mm -hmm. I don't know if the word, you didn't say valuable, but it is important for us, right? So the way that Jeanette receives and what she receives and how she receives that information is different. Just like everybody on this call is going to have a different experience, even of the call, correct? Like, <laughs> I'm sure you see that through your clients. And that kind of brings us to the next point too, yeah. of how you help clients. What are some of those profound things that you have seen it, through working with clients? And, you know, maybe you could give us a couple examples yeah. of how, yeah. And then talk a little bit about how, I was going to say, I'm going question. to all the questions. That's so many questions. I mean, I, <laughs> I, know, I, I know, I know. No, it's great. I love this. I love, I love when interviews go really deep. And uh, this is, it's fun. <laughs> for me. I just, I felt like, I, I mean, when you got on, I was like, oh my God, there's, I was like overloaded with questions. Because you know, some of the questions that I've been like, even before we go down that rabbit hole, I wanted to ask you what, you know, what was kind of the coolest thing that you remember hearing from your podcast from talking with UFO Ooh. investigators and other things like that, like, and maybe not something that also connects with consciousness and the, the, the frequency. I've interviewed quite a, quite a large spectrum of, of different people on the podcast. So yeah. from, from really nuts and bolts people who have never experienced anything, but have written like 30 books on the subject. That's a very different conversation to, I've actually seen the craft or I've been abducted and I've seen this for myself, you know, yeah. so I've had the full range. I've had Professor Avi Loeb on there. He's building his giant telescopes with the Galileo project. So he's got his perspective. Yeah. Um, people like Jim Peniston who've had personal experiences, you know, so there's, there's quite a wide spectrum of, 
of this sort of thing. And so I guess in terms of the coolest thing that that I've that I've learned through the podcast is that the ufology community is landing on the same conclusion that the spiritual people have probably known for a few decades longer. And I don't want to, you know, I'm very mindful on how I say this, but it's like, it's like, it, there's a there's a merging a coming together of of understandings now and even people like I I interviewed Tom Carey now Tom Carey is a beautiful soul he's interviewed over 600 first and second witnesses to the to the Roswell case him and his team and you know after after 32 years of researching this again these are the conversations that happen after the podcast when we when we stop recording right I just I just asked him I said you know so, so what do you think like and he said well you know I'd be much more likely to believe now that this is interdimensional than it is extraterrestrial because it's just it's not possible with the technology that we know of and even the stuff that they've seen I mean they were saying some of these craft they have they have no motors well how do they physically get across space they have to bend time yeah. i spoke to him wow. in recent, well i haven't published the interview yet now he lives in the united states and he's in his 80s right he's actually been invited to, to elon musk spacex because he wrote a book about some of the work that was related to him and he's got a cool life this dude but yeah so chatting with jim he he explained to me he's like this the science today now he's been in the military he said the science today that the military actually has is they understand that you can take the fabric of time space, you can fold it over. He kind of showed it like, you know, like folding over a sticky note from one corner to another. And like that, it just bends and you can through your consciousness travel from one point to another, not physically by going years and years and years on a, on a rocket ship, but yeah. just by bending the time space around it. And he says the military has that technology today. I, mean, I think our consciousness has that technology and to a degree, you know, I think I did this class on, you know, trannies is what they called the class. And it's like, you know, trans teleportation and, and other, like just the magic tricks that we actually have some access to. And we know we have access to it because they're kind of the miracles that happen during emergencies, right? Like when the, the emotions are escalated and things need to change. And it was just, it's kind of wild because, you know, they were in this class, they were sharing all these different stories on, you know, how we have these capacities, but we don't really know how to use them. So, and, and how can we ask questions and follow the energy to like expand it? Um, but I mean, we can't do it to the, to the way of like traveling to outer space and back. <laughs> But maybe yeah. you can, you know, right. what, what really is possible that we don't know what that's possible is kind of the question mark. Anyway, wow, 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 wow. I feel like I could talk to you for hours and I need to dive into like everything you do on your podcast now because it just sounds yeah. super, super <laughs> fun. Oh my gosh. You have a, so Leonka asked, did how you, do you work, work with, with your clients? Yeah, how do you work with your oh, clients? Yeah, yeah. And so, a little bit about what you brought for our audience today yeah yeah for sure for sure so so my work is typically with entrepreneurs healers star seeds people who are really here to to assist with the the co-creation of the new earth and and one mm -hmm. of the things i really want to tell anyone who's listening to this right now is that you know it, this is possible Everything that I'm talking about today, I can teach you. I have figured out a systematic, systematic, methodical approach that if you follow the system, you can learn how to do this for yourself as well. Now, a lot of clients think, well, will I have to meditate for, for 10 years like Isha did in order to get there? I'm saying absolutely not. Most of my clients get there in about one to two years because I've now systemized and packaged everything together in this neat little program. It's not going to take you seven to 10 years to figure this stuff out now what I the way that I typically work is I, I work through activations and the activations they vary to to a number of different outcomes some of my clients they come to me because they want to learn more about abundance and so there are specific activations in our library that have that cater to that and we just had one lady the other day she posted in our group 
she just manifested like 40 grand cash. And this is the second time this has happened to her in the, in the 12 months we've been working together. And we see these sorts of results all the time. So wow. one of the benefits is abundance. And the reason why it works is when you expand your consciousness into the galactic field, you know, we're actually working with the upper chakras and everything works together, right? When it comes to abundance and safety that we're talking about lower chakras, but when you focus on the upper chakras, there's a level of clearing that happens across all of them. So you actually need to work on your lower chakras and your upper chakras at the same time. And, you know, through the various activations, when you when you put all of that together, it is going to impact your 3D life as well. So abundance is, is one of those ways. Now, the other big benefit that a lot of people get out of doing this work, other than obviously the coolness of knowing the mysteries of the universe, which is number one for me. So, so that, that aside, it's, it's the healing that people receive. Now, one of the things we we didn't touch upon, Jenneth, and I think you, you kind of mentioned it, but we never really got into it. You know, different beings have different specialities in the universe. Mm. So if you connect with the Pleiadians, they have one set of qualities or one set of wisdom and information that they'll give you. Now, the Arcturians, they're actually the master healers in the universe. So mm -hmm. if you needed specifically to tap into wisdom related to healing, you could tap into the consciousness of the Arcturians and they would give you a very different set of information. Now, the Arcturians were among the first that I connected with and they showed me exactly their energetic healing processes. And, and we oh, have wow. several activations inside the program. People have spontaneous healings. People oh. have, you know, teaching I teach them how to heal a little bit. <laughs> I, said, I, I have a I have, have a hip injury that needs to heal a little bit. <laughs> so you would connect with the Arcturians. The Arcturians. Yeah. And so you, what you would do is you would go inside the portal and you would do the Arcturian activation. And there is a very specific activation to connect with the frequency of Anashita. You would sit, you would listen to that and you would ask for guidance through there. Or you could just listen to the healing activation, which is also in there. And any of those options cool. would help you to get that frequency. So you've got the abundance, you've got the healing. Now, you've also got the business side of things as well. You might be wondering, well, how do ETs help me build my business? Well, my entire business, you know, was built off the back end of connecting with these galactic beings. And again, you know, I've connected with over 20 different races. If I was to go and, and get business advice, I would actually be going to the Orions. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the Orions in the eighth dimensional frequency, the beings that I connect with there, they have a really big oversight when it comes to the planetary timelines and the earth grids and what's going on at the really macro level. So as a CEO, as a business owner, that's a skill set we need to learn how to have so that we can oversee the processes. So if I was to, to you know, get business advice, like what do I need to do? What's the best action? Should I do this? Should I do that? I step back, I go into the Arcturian, there's a special place they have, and they can show me things about my business. So depending on what you actually need, you can connect with different races for different things. And then on top of that, you've also got the whole spectrum of all beings in the 13th dimension. If you want to connect with angelic beings, you will they will probably, again, help to heal you. If you want to connect with the, the whale and dolphin beings of Ceres, again, there's activations that allow you to do that. So the offering that I'm giving today, which is a very special offer that I've not done before, we are doing a 30 days unlimited access to all of the activations. Literally, if you want to listen wow. to activation a day and learn about all these different galactic races, you can do that for just $97 today. My gosh, <laughs> my gosh. And it sounds like, wow. and Judith, you must have been looking like um, <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I, I wouldn't listen to everything. Anyway. And you want to go on back, Jeanette, there is, um, you know, different, uh, you know, things and healing yeah. and um, aspects of every different um, race that, you know, alien race that, that you I guess I never really see. thought about that. So you know, maybe the, you uh, needed, it was I, time for you to, so, to now I need to, <laughs> to reach out further and, and connect to the art. Arturians and yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, and the angels seems, to do that. The angels seems that that realm seems the easiest to connect to for almost everyone, or the, yeah. from my understanding. Like they're here, they're like listen to us. Yeah, <laughs> they would have thought it really, it plays a lot of role in that as well. Because you know, I mean, 
there's also there's also to do with our belief systems and yeah, uh, yeah. because because angels have been in our consciousness for so long yeah. it's it, it i mean all all the beings are easy to connect with it's just the things oh, okay. that get in the way are either energetic blockages mindset blockages like the thing with angels is that you know the mental part is there's not much of a barrier there for most people because we've heard about them so much they're very much in the field and so everybody knows what an angel is what it looks like you know they kind of know okay there's archangel michael and gabriel and we've all heard the stories so that's why it's easy for people to connect with it because that I mental see. barrier is so strong right mm -hmm. yeah you, so let me ask this you wouldn't even use the word alien would you Oh no, I hate that exactly, word. Exactly, right? Yeah. I mean, right? It, and so that's something that you learn through the practice of, but because, but but we can use the word like angel and because we've been using it as humanity and we've been, that we had that connection and that's the reason why you feel like we could see them more. So now that we are starting to open ourselves up as humanity, like I'm just thinking for the bigger, bigger, like even mainstream, right? Some people that may not, be, you know, may not necessarily have heard this podcast, right? <laughs> they could start to receive being, being, and the word being, and, and have a different energy about it. Like, just all the way around, that just opens up the ability for us to connect. I don't know if I'm really saying anything here, but just really trying to kind of differentiate where we are in this process of in Earth. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and, and humanity. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And there's there's so much to explore out there, you know. Right. And one of the biggest things that that I, I really want to share with the audience today is just it's it's you know, it's knowing that the time is is now. now. Like some people say, yeah. Oh, like that's all great, you know, that's all cool, but like how is it gonna impact my day to day? And and I just, I know that when we connect with these beings, I call them star family, by the way. That's how I refer to them, my beautiful galactic or star family when we connect and open up to them what we're really doing from that bigger picture perspective is we're moving the needle towards intergalactic peace and that's that's the vision that's the highest vision you know and and yes it's going to help you with your abundance it's going to help you with your health it's going to do all of those things and and there's value in all of that but if we really take it to that highest vision possible it's actually looking at it and going you know what there is a possibility of living on earth in this higher state of consciousness where we are connected, where we are open, where we are accepting and embracing of all consciousness and life forms. Mm -hmm. And that's really the core of this work. Yeah. Wow. I cry. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, and I feel that people speaking this, and maybe even, you know, seeking these conversations, seeking, you know, some of the, the things within your, your work that you might have, you know, that will help them connect. They have to have some guidance sometimes. What, what are your, your thoughts? I, I really feel that I would have never been able to channel anything had I not met somebody already that had channeled like yeah. literally being around that frequency gave me the awareness that, well, this is possible into what does it take to do this? Yeah, I think that's a really, it's a really important piece of consciousness evolution, you know, and this is where I, I see a lot of people, you know, they think, well, we all have it within us and that's great. That's perfect. That's, you know, I totally believe that. And also everything is also other humans that are around you. And, and I'm, I'm so for having mentors and people to guide and teach you in this work as well, because you can accelerate that journey and you can go so much further and so much deeper when you expand the realm of possibility. Like, as you said, you know, you had to see someone else channel first to then go, mm. okay, yes, this is a thing that I can do. And, and, you know, that's, that's been the case with a lot of my clients as well. And one of the biggest things we do with activation work is it's actually just a frequency transfer. Like I know with my clients and I see this happen all the time, soon as they jump into the portal and they do say one Arcturian activation that's it that connection is now online and then they can go and connect with those Arcturians I whenever they want, you know that. and, and it's, it's with every frequency you just need that it's initial catalyst 
that initial activation. And one of the biggest things I see to all of my clients at the end of every activation, almost you will hear me say, and now you can connect to this energy whenever you want, whenever you feel drawn to. Yeah. So it creates a level of self-empowerment for my clients where they're not then falling back on me every five minutes because they need me to connect them. No, I right. just teach them how to do it. And then they've got it. Then they can do it. So you it's are just, the first connect yeah. <laughs> or yeah. the first contact to connect, I guess I That's should exactly say. It. That is exactly it. You also connect so well with just being too. So it's like you are, a, you know, contact, you know, you could connect and contact. I think that who you are. Such a, the whole yeah. the whole premise behind the behind the first contact podcast is really to to invite people to consider that that we can actually take this into our own hands. You know, especially in the ufology yeah. side of things, there's a lot of people that are waiting for some big official government disclosure. I'm like, well, I have my <laughs> so and you can start today. You can do it now. You know? <laughs> What's that? What's that? <laughs> the, the conspiracy theories. <laughs> oh, oh yeah don't get me started on that <laughs> there's a lot out there <laughs> oh, said, this has been a pleasure to have you oh my gosh what a fun fun call oh my gosh and I cannot wait if we could talk to you again sometime in the future see how we progress see how the audience has and I really yeah. I really encourage people to dive into you know what you brought for us today it's it's quite amazing like I mean, I, I know that there's no way I could probably digest all of the information that you have put there, but I'm just so grateful that you have, you know, made this offering for us too. Yeah. yeah. So you guys, you're looking for the word special offer and you'll find it in the show notes. And if you're listening on the website, you will watch, see it right there, big and bold on page. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Aisha.